Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, devotion uh, with Tayside Christian Fellowship. Uh, my name is Ross, I'm one of the members at Tayside and uh, it's great to be with you again and uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to doing these devotions and uh, just giving you some thoughts as I work through through things. In the background there, uh, that side, you'll see a picture of Squirt. Uh, the turtle that Elizabeth painted for my birthday and uh, I really appreciate it so I thought I would sit in a different chair and uh, uh, show you a picture of Squirt not for any theological reason but just because I I really appreciated it when it was given to me as a gift but there is a reason for for having the picture of Squirt in the background and the reason it's there, and this might be a slight conceptual leap, but the reason it's there is because Elizabeth chose to do it. Okay? She chose to paint that picture for me. She chose to give of her time to paint that picture and give it to me as a gift. And both the girls, they love art and they practice and they draw and they seek to develop their skills in that and because it's you don't become an artist without painting you don't become a musician without practicing and my dear friend Bruce Milne who you know that I quote frequently talks about this thing and I know I have mentioned this phrase from the platform numerous times but I think it's such an incredible insight that he gave me that a, I, I never tire of sharing it. And Bruce talks about the Christian life being a divine human interface in that God has saved us, God has redeemed us, God has sent his son to die for our sin he has sent the Holy Spirit to live within us. But there is a human part following that where we choose to develop a relationship with God. And I know we talked about that when I think I shared it was either my first or my second devotion when I talked about being planted. And if I'm repeating some of that stuff <clears throat> tonight, then please excuse me. But this has really, really been in my, my heart for the last couple of weeks. That what are the choices I make that enable me to deepen my relationship with God or not deepen my relationship with God? And part of that, as you know, I shared last week, I was talking about aching for heaven, but also the, the resolutions of Jonathan Edwards and how he... He was resolute about how he would manage his time, all these sorts of things. And obviously he lived in a different age when things, there was maybe less competing noise for time. But the principles are still there. The principles are still valuable. And so I look at the life of Christ and Jesus made choices to get up early and pray. He would make a choice to go away by himself in some solitude and spend time with the Father. And he was God manifest in flesh, the Son, you know, our Redeemer, uh, redeeming our humanity, sharing our humanity, walking as we walk so that he could become a merciful and a faithful high priest. But he, he made choices on a daily basis to continue to serve God and honour God. And we, we see that in his temptation when he quotes scripture back to the devil and he says, you know, you know, it says you will serve the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Or it says man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God, that he made conscious decisions to honour God and to serve God and display the perfect humanity that 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 was required of him so that he could become our saviour and he could 
complete the work and the task that he was appointed to. And so the reason I've been thinking about this is because I think there is a tendency towards passivity in our life. There's a tendency not to work. There's a tendency not to make the hard choice. And it is a hard choice sometimes to get up. It is a hard choice to sometimes choose not to watch something or look at something or or something like that. But we make these choices and we make these choices from the position of God's grace with God helping us so that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, that we add to our holiness and our goodness. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying there. I'm not talking about a works-based merit before God in the sense that we do what we need to do and um, somehow that makes us right with God. No, what I'm talking about is that we are called a child of God and from that place of rest, as I've shared before in these devotions, we then move out and we work. And so I just want to share some verses that I have been thinking about and working through as I think about how we how we do these things. And the first one is in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 29. And I know this verse very well because the first sermon I ever preached publicly to a church, eh, St Andrew's Baptist, was in Colossians 1, 27 to, eh, sorry, 24 to 29. And verse 29 says this, and this is Paul writing, To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And what Paul has been saying is that we are proclaiming Christ, we are teaching people with wisdom, and we want to present people fully mature. So we want to present people ready for heaven. And we know as we've talked in the devotions about what Paul prays for his people, he prays for the churches that he's planted. But in this, in this verse, he says, I strenuously contend. I strenuously contend. And the Greek word is agonisima, from which we get agony. So this is not a this is not a passive thing. This is really grinding it out. This is really forcing it through. This is working really hard. Now, Paul is not saying, I strenuously work. He says, I strenuously work with the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. So there's a bit of a mystery here. I don't quite know how that works. But there's this divine human interface that we're talking about where Paul is clearly making choices to work hard, to preach the gospel, to share the gospel, to pray for people, to plant churches, to act as an apostle. And he is doing this with the power of God working through him. But Paul is implying here <clears throat> that he's part of that process. He is part of working. He is making the decision to work. The next verse I want to share with you is in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. And Paul says this. Well, I'll start from verse 9 actually. He says, I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace, grace of God that was with me. And do you see this? So Paul is saying, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I'm a saved child of God. And this grace was not without effect. This grace worked in me and I worked hard and I shared the gospel and I sacrificed for the gospel and I sacrificed for the church. And this grace of God was working through him and was empowering him and taking him forward into the world as he shared the gospel. And then in that, further down in that chapter, in verse 58, he says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, 
because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. How many of us sometimes think we're working and we don't quite know why we're working. But the labour for the Lord is not in vain. And just one final verse in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And Paul is praying for the Thessalonian church. And this is what he prays. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power, he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So do you see that? That his power may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. Now the resolutions of Jonathan Edwards, the resolution of Jonathan Edwards start with him saying, I need God's grace. This is not me trying to merit salvation, but I want to honour God. I want to live for the glory of God and I need God's grace to help me do that. And so the question for us is, our circumstances are all over the place. You know, there's been flash flooding. We don't have any internet. You know, we don't have any, you know, we don't have any phone line. We've got all sorts of issues. Um, other people have had their houses flooded. Um, you know, people, you know, people have had their cars damaged. And this is all on top of everything that's happening with COVID. And there maybe is a tendency to just hide away and keep calm and not think about it and just try and avoid it and not face the realities of life. But there's a sense in which God doesn't call us to stay where we are. God calls us to move us forward, to run the race, to fight the fight, to work towards the crown of righteousness, to press on, to take hold of the same way in the same way that Christ has taken hold of you, to forget what is behind and to move forward in service and desire to become more Christ-like. So the question is, how are your choices? So I've been really challenged by, I heard about someone who is praying five times a day. They have set an alarm and they're praying five times a day at different points because they resolved to, to do that. Now, I don't think, they're not doing that to earn God's favour. They're doing that to get to know God more. And the same is for us, getting up in the morning praying, reading our Bible, coming to church, coming back to church, fellowship, all these things, they become important because they are a means of grace, as people used to talk about. And then people talk about the disciplines of grace. So the discipline of prayer, the discipline of solitude, the discipline of meditation, the discipline of me memorization, all these things. And we sometimes run from these and we think they're legalistic and we think it's, we think it's very difficult. But the reality is, what we need to do is make a choice to live for God and to serve God and to stand at that point of the divine human interface where we allow God's grace to work through us and to empower us and become more sanctified, more Christ-like and more powerful in our evangelism and the sharing of our faith. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you have called us. You have called us to Christian life. You have called us to be in relationship with you. I thank you that you love us, that you care for us, that you came for us and you sent your son for us. I pray that your grace would infuse us, would transform us, would make us more like Christ so that we can move forward 
in the power of your grace working through us at the point of this divine human interface and serve you and become more like you and be salt and light in our world. Help us in all this, we pray. Help us be ready for when the church comes back. Make us excited about being in fellowship again with one another in your presence, in our building. Thank you that this is happening and progress is being made. Watch over us be with Jim and Anna as they celebrate their marriage tomorrow. Bless them, keep them, make your face to shine upon them and give them a really strong marriage. Watch over us in all the circumstances we find ourselves in and help us to grasp the, the divine nature that you have imparted in us through the Holy Spirit who lives within us and allow him to shape us and become more Christ-like. For we ask this in the Lord's name. Amen.